On this day in history, 1958, President Eisenhower signs into law the National Aeronautics and Space Act, thrusting America and the world into the space age. And in this day in history, in 2013, Jeff Moriarty finally publishes his very first book. I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books of Mere Hangout. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Books in Beer, where we have already snatched the pebble from the Sensi's indie publishing hand, so you don't have to. My name is Jeff Moriarty, and our topic today is discussing my adventure in publishing Facebook for Authors. Little surprise that Evo didn't make a joke that as long as I've been working on it, it was my space for authors, but uh, we'll just kind of roll with that right there. So, yay me! So, Cheers. I am celebrating with not a small, but a large beer, a Dogfish Head 75 Minute, which has been um, bottle conditioning in the back of our closet for a while, and um, quite nice, quite nice. Sounds How tasty. I'm going local. It's time for some Mr. Pineapple by Santam Brewing Company. Um, it's still hot outside, so a nice and refreshing beer because I've been drinking a lot of heavy stuff lately, and I need, I need to cut back, so this is cutting back. Yeah, we've got a, a big bad Baptist sitting in there looking at me. Oh. like, wow, that's hard to do when it's 110 degrees. That's just yes. pushing yes, it even for me. Is Well, enough of the beer. Let's jump into the books portion of the program. Um, yes, sir. We have both alluded to the fact, Jeff, that finally the book Creating Fabulous Facebook No. Yes, creating fabulous Facebook pages, a modern indie author's guide, uh, has been launched today. Was the day you finally hit the publish button? So, uh, a, a couple of questions about that. Uh, but but I, my first one is: so you've been talking about this publishing thing for a long time. You and I've been doing e-publish unum for a long time. Uh, now you have finally done it for the first time. What took so damn long um, to actually make it happen in the first place? Why didn't you publish a long time ago? Oh, Lord. I, you really want to start out with this question? Sure. So, uh, all right. Well, you asked for it, Bill. I've never – I love helping people get their ideas out there. I write, I produce content, I've got my own ideas, but it's always been secondary. I do this event, Evo, I know that you're well familiar with, Ignite Phoenix. I don't get up on the stage to share my ideas, I'll do glue in between, but it's about getting other people up there. So even though I've been a writer, I just haven't had a big desire to publish. Now I did actually seriously flirt with doing some recording for PaiaBooks.com, a site that you are intimately familiar with. Um, but even then, I kind of backed off. And then my writing tends to focus on fiction. So I have, I'm sure, well over a million words in fiction in different formats, from screenplays to uh, novellas on my computer. And I start it with nonfiction, which is like saying, wow, I like to run. I run all the time. So I'm going to enter a swimming competition because <laughs> that's exactly the easiest way to kind of make that transition to competitive uh, distance sports. So, yeah, all of that kind of piled up, and, you know, I knew the process. I knew the ropes. I walked many other people through it, but doing it myself was painful. Well, let's talk about a little bit of that pain. Oh, um, nice. Yes. You know, for, for you and I, as, as we have been consistent in our message for the last couple of years, we, we see digital publishing and indie publishing as a multi-phased process, writing, editing. Publishing is one piece of that, and also the promoting and the, and the interacting as well. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the uh, publishing piece right now. You've, you've done it. You've seen me go through the pain of doing it a couple of times, and so you knew all of this that was going to happen, but... What what did you think? Where 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 did you discover pain points in the process? Well, I mean, starting up right up off the gate. To clarify, this book is the third in our a modern indie author's guide series. So it was 
important that this match the first two that you wrote, the book blurbs and Google Plus. But I wrote it in a different tool. And I could not, no matter what I tried, make it look exactly like yours. I can make it close. I can make it very, very similar. But I couldn't make it exactly the same, which was really a maddening pain in the ass. <laughs> I think that's an important thing to, for people to, to recognize. The reason we took different paths as we were producing the book was to explore those. Uh, we want to help authors figure out what tools are out there uh, that, that they might use, and so that means we do different things. So when I started with a product which is called Pressbooks, uh, Jeff, I actually started with Google Docs writing mine and then used Pressbooks to actually create the ebook. Jeff wanted to use a dedicated tool for writing and publishing, and, and that's called Scrivener. In fact, did use that to create the book. Um, but that's where the problems began at that ending piece because Pressbooks does everything for you and Scrivener gives you a little bit more control. It was just very difficult, I believe, is what you're saying, to make that templated version of Pressbooks match something that you could do with, with, with Scrivener, right? Yeah, Scrivener, I ran test exports and I had a great EPUB, I had a great Mobi file, I could make a fantastic version. It just didn't look like yours. Yeah. So, and one of the things that I enjoy about this process is learning. There isn't one way to make an ebook. Right. Um, and you have a very different approach than I do. We have some overlap, a lot of differences, and, you know, I learned from that. So, that was one of the first educations I got. So, yeah, I ended up... I'm sorry, that, that's probably important only if, you, if you're a writer and you plan on writing a, a collection of books or a series of books, it's, it's important that you have some visual stylings. Now, of course, if one book is a, you know, a nonfiction book on hummingbirds and another one over here is a, a, a kid's you know, YA novel, they can obviously look a whole lot different. But these books that we're writing are called Modern Indie Author's Guides, and so they need to look and they need to feel kind of the same as, as, as it goes through. So aside, obviously those are those are some individual challenges. Um, what about the process of getting things up in various marketplaces? How, how was that? <laughs> so I would like to round up all the people who currently are head of development for all those different marketplaces in a room, cover them in honey, and release a bunch of hungry bears. Um, yeah, that was not a lot of fun. Every single one of them had me using profanity at different points in the process. Uh, Smashwords took a completely validated EPUB file, absolutely clean as far as I or any tool I could run could tell, and, re and produced a mysterious error that it wanted me to correct, and vague information how to fix that error that no other marketplace remotely saw. Uh, Kobo. Kobo took my book and said, congratulations, you're published. Click here to see your new book in our marketplace. I would click the link, and it would not work. I know you, Evo, click the link on your phone, and it worked. It would not work on my iPad. It would work on even-numbered minutes, not on odd-numbered minutes. Well, you keep Kobo and your mysterious random book availability issue there. <laughs> so, and then ISBNs, right? I had, uh, you know, we have, we have a block of ISBNs from Bacher, and we assign them to all of our books. And um, I went through and was trying to figure out how to assign it to my book in was it Kobo, where it's on a completely separate, or is it Smashwords, where you have to go to a completely separate Manage ISBNs page? You can't, it's not in the information with the book, it's somewhere else. Right. Somebody, you know, I'm a big believer in putting these the material out in multiple marketplaces. But when everyone is so radically different and has both usability and workflow issues, that doesn't help indie authors try to get their work out there for the for the first time. If, if, if it wasn't important to me to be on all four of these platforms, um, and there are different points where I would just quit and said, you know, screw it, we're gonna launch on, you know, just Amazon or one of those places and, and just call it there and I'll figure this crap out later. It should not be that difficult. And I think that's the reason why 
companies like Smashwords, you know, or why authors will turn to Smashwords, and you know, even though they've they've gone through the pain and effort to put it up there, which is you know it's not the most beautifully well laid out site, and the they put a process as you described right there. ISBN's a totally weird place, but from there, Smashwords can handle the distribution, so you don't have to worry about doing Amazon on your own and Barnes and Noble on your own and Kobo and all the other places. You can just do it through Smashwords. They take a small percentage of the price and you and I have always thought, well, why would you do that? You could just load it up yourself. Yeah, this, this is why people opt to do that one because it's a pain in the ass and it doesn't have to be. Yeah, but then that also means you solve the mystery error that Smashwords throws out um, and you know, you have to decrypt, you have to sacrifice a chicken and figure out, you know, the crosswords puzzle that it throws up there to get Smashwords to use. So right. I completely agree with your premise, but even Smashwords is throwing up random stuff that, you know, digging into it, I understand what it thinks the problem is, even though technically the EPUB file is completely correct. But if I didn't have the knowledge I did about ebooks and that format, it would have been baffling to figure out. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's a shame that you had such a challenge with Kobo because in my experience of doing this for the last two times, that was the best experience. That was the easiest, most straightforward, sensical uh, process. But again, the weirdness with databases is what the weirdness with databases is. Yeah, the, the, well, the, the, that front process was nice and smooth. It was clean. Everything was laid out. It stepped you through it. It had a, a big progress buttons so you knew, hey, these sections – you do one, it would green light. I'm like, this is great. I see why you know everybody loves this. And then your book is published. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's published in the Phantom Zone. So you know that front end. You know the front end was great. It's just I don't know what the heck happened after that. But it seems to be miraculously appearing now. So yeah. keeping my fingers crossed. And that may be part of the problem, the what trips up authors on all the other stuff to do, like sending out your free copies of your book, like making a landing page on a website somewhere, like all of the things that you need to do to get it, it, it out and in front of people. You've become so damn frustrated by the process of just getting the frigging thing live that you don't want to go through and do all of, all of the other things you have to do to make your book sell. Challenge. No, and, no I, that hit that exact problem hit me. By the time, you know, you'd mentioned that I hit publish this morning. No, I hit publish on Friday because I knew there was a 24 to 48 hour lag in getting this stuff up there. So I've been wrestling with this all weekend. So by the time today, when all I had left was the mysterious Kobo disappearance, you know, and I had the emails to get out and our newsletter and everything else that announced it, I'm like, oh, you know what I am? I'm tired of my book. I'm tired of this book. You know, it's done. If you find it, great. I mean, it was kind of my attitude because I just I'd already been so frustrated by that process. Um, but you still have to you still have to plow through and get it done. So. And I still have more to do. Well, and and perhaps that's the hidden benefit inside of this. You and I tell people when they say, "What should I be doing to market my book?" Uh, our answer is typically the same thing, and that's go write another book. This propels you to do that because you know, the last thing you want to do is keep talking about the damn book that you just spent 72 hours trying to upload. Yes, please, go work on something else to get your mind clear and, and ahead of that. Well, congratulations. I'm glad you've done it. Do, do you feel better? I do. Sorry, I made the mistake of trying to see if we had any questions on Google+. Plus which caused an infinite recursion of me watching myself, watching myself, watching myself, watching myself on YouTube for a second there. Nah, you're a yes. <laughs> now that I'm not, I've learned not to touch Google Plus while I'm using Hangouts. No. Uh, yes, I do feel a lot better. But, you know, I already thought about this. What's the next book going to be? So. Right. Well, we've got quite a few things planned for the modern indie author's guides. And as you yes. and I have just discussed it, that they don't have to come from the two of us. There are other great brains out there which we could tap into to help modern indie authors write this book. So we'll definitely be looking at that. Um, I know that you've been doing some stuff in the fiction world over on our friends at the, at the Wattpad, so that probably feels good as well. That feels fantastic. That, you know, I did... Um that to on, on Wattpad, getting a short story going to get the fiction side of my brain working again and to play. 
because that's the type of writing I just genuinely enjoy. I loved writing this book for Facebook, and I'm really hoping that it helps a lot of authors out. But, you know, screwing around with bizarre superhero sci-fi adventure stories, you know, that's that's me at heart. So really I, enjoying that, and, and you know, I'm trying to figure out what I do with that in terms of publishing. And, you know, we've had people on, like uh, uh, Claudia Hall Christian, who does that Denver serial where she writes shorts and then she publishes them in books and then kind of, you know, she has this kind of flow to them and I'd love to tackle something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, when it's time to do that, I, I, I know a couple of guys that can help you. Oh, wait, I'm just getting recursive and weird now. Yes. All righty, Jeff. Well, thanks for sharing the story with us. Once again, congratulations on getting thank the book you, out you. there. And uh, for everybody, um, now that's our third book in the Modern Indie Author's Guide series, available just about everywhere. If you go to epublishunum.com, we can give you some more information about that. In fact, I will put a link not only to Jeff's book, but also to the first two books in, in the collection, um, one of which, by the way, also just went live moments ago on patiobooks.com, so you can get writing awesome book blurbs in my dulcet tones. Ah. It's an audiobook for you, so you can have fun at that. So I'll put links to all of that in the show notes. You'll find those at booksandbeer.com. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of e Publish Unum. We create workshops, guidebooks, and roadmaps to help authors cut through the complexity of indie publishing. Sound interesting? Check it out at epublishunum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I am Evo Terra. Thanks for being a part of the show. Exterminate. Yes. <laughs>